Hello, dear brothers and sisters, how are you? This is the voice of Professor Peter Vakunta in the United States. Welcome to the Bamunka Language Tutor. Uh, this platform is devoted to the teaching of, the, of a language called Ngimakoke in the Northwest region of Cameroon. Uh, Professor Peter Vakunta lives in the United States and uh, he uh, is a free, is a son of the soil of the Bamunka village. Uh, this uh, this broadcast today, uh, dear friends, will be a little long because I, I will be doing some introductions. And uh, but I promise that the next uh, the fo the following uh, uh, episodes will be quite short. Now the Bamunka language uh, it has uh, its own peculiarities. And by that, I mean that it's a language that is very tonal. And so if you're learning Bamunka and you cannot uh, play around uh, carefully with your tone, you may not be able to, to really speak this language appropriately. So I do encourage you guys who are trying to learn uh, my mother tongue to uh, train yourselves on how to do the tonal the tonal uh, enunciations in the in the language because, like I said earlier, it's a very it's a very difficult language, uh, but it's a learnable language. Okay, I don't want to discourage you guys, but because any language is learnable and any language uh, that exists on planet Earth is teachable, and that's why I've taken it upon myself to teach this language because I think it is very very important. Um, now the the Bamanka language uh, has is in the process of being codified. Um, many people are working, many sons of the soil are working on the codification of the Bamunka language. Uh, much has been done. There's a Bamunka primer uh, that exists online. Now I'm looking at it and uh, I just wanted to make, mention something here that the Bamunka language, uh, the alphabet is actually a hybrid alphabet. I looked, I took a look at the uh, the primer that uh, one of my brothers uh, by the name of Daniel uh, Mbigonyi, who has been working very hard with uh, missionar missionaries from from overseas, uh, have have made. They've made a primer which is which you can access online. Uh, and it's I noticed that the alphabet of the, the Ngimakoka, which is Bamunka language, is actually uh, a hybrid. It is it's a hybrid. It's a combination of the regular, uh, the regular alphabet that we know about, and the uh, and the and some additions, some additional uh, sounds that do not exist in the English language alphabet. Okay, so that is it, uh, good friends, uh, the, the listeners who have tuned to this platform today. I'm very excited uh, to teach you my mother tongue, and like I said, it's a language that needs. Uh, a little bit of effort because this is not like radical language like French, English, and so on and so forth. So uh, we're going to get started today. Uh, I'm going to be talking about um, how we give commands uh, in um, in my mother tongue. Um, we, in 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 grammatical terms, we call the command uh, the what do we call the commands mode is is the imperative. If you if you speak other languages. Uh, I speak at least, I speak at least seven languages uh, globally. Uh, most of the uh, most of the instructions that you give in in other languages, you give them using what they call the imperative mode. The mode, the in, imperative mode, is not a tense; it's a mode. Okay, and when you give orders, you give commands. You use you use um, you use the imperative mode. And so today, I'll be talking about that in this short uh, in this short lesson that I prepared for you folks today. And uh, that will be how do we give uh, commands in in the in the in Gimikoka, which is my mother tongue. I'm going to give start with with a few explain just a few examples, and then I will explain as I go along. And from time to time, I will be touching on other languages just to make you see the diff the, the similarities and differences. And now, uh, example number one: if you want to say to the you know to uh, if you want to say in Bamunka, eat. Like eat food, eat your food. You will say you, okay, or you foba, which means eat your food. You is eat, okay, you. 
it's it. And if you want to say eat your food, you're going to say euphoba. Fobber, it, it could be a generic term for anything. It could be clothes. It could be food. It could be anything. But in this particular case, we're dealing here with the culinary domain that refers to food. So if you see to say some, a Bamunkat man, somebody from Bamunkat says to you, maybe he has set some food before in front of you and he says, uh, Nini, which means sir, or na, which means ma'am, you for ndua, he's telling you, eat your food now. The word ndua in Bamunka re refers to the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the conjunction uh, now, okay? So th this is the first example. The second example is laugh. Somebody can say to you, laugh, maybe like in a, a theater situation where people are, you know, you know, faking laughter. Somebody can say to you, laugh. In the Bamunka language, in my language, my folks will say, chur. Okay, chur is laugh in my mother tongue. Now, if somebody didn't want you to laugh, he will say, kamichur fe. Kamichur fe. So as you can see, the negation in my mother tongue is m is, is comprised of the m particle and fe. Okay. Chur. That's the this is the declarative instruction. Kamichur fe. See m and fe. That gives you the negation construction in Bamuka. The first example I gave you was you. If the Bamuka man wants to tell you not to not to eat, he will say, Kame you fe. Kame you fe. As you're seeing, you're hearing this in this example, you're hearing m and you're hearing fe in combination with other aspects of the language. Okay? So eat you. Kame you fe. Don't eat. Chur. That's laugh. Kame chur fe. Don't laugh. The other example is cry. <laughs> I don't know for whatever reason somebody will be commanding you to cry, but it does happen in life that something happens and you say somebody says, "Well, cry now, whatever." Maybe to fake, you know, in, a, in a, the situation of a drama. The Bama Kama will say "guia," okay? "Guia" is cry, and to stop you from crying, maybe there's some some bereavement. You you lost a dear one and you're crying, and somebody comes to console you. He's going to say to you. Okay, and an another way of saying the same thing is But regardless of what you hear, brothers and sisters, dear friends who are listening to me on this platform, regardless of what you say, whether you're saying you are hearing you're you're hearing le and you're hearing fe. Okay, you're hearing le guiafe, you're hearing me and the fe at the same time, in the same sentence structure. So that's extremely important that you know how to form negations in the, in Gimekoko because uh, you need to look for the articles that, the particles, the linguistic particles that represent negation, okay? Kame you fe, you're hearing me and you're hearing fe. Kame chua fe, you're hearing me and you're hearing fe. Kame guia fe. You're hearing me and you're hearing fe. We can take another example, dear friends. I hope you're following me. This language is not a, is not a no-brainer, as I, as I said er, earlier when I started this program. If you want this, learn, to learn this language, you need to be very concentrated. You need to be very attentive. The, another example I want to use here is drink. In Bamunka, in, in, in our, my mother tongue, we say nu. Whatever you're drinking, whether you're drinking water or wine or medicine, Regardless of anything that is liquid, when you are when you're taking imbibing that, the Bamunka man will say nu. And if they want to prevent you from drinking, they will say kamu nufe. So you're hearing again, the good friend, you're hearing the mer and you're hearing you're already hearing the, the, the fe article. So mer and fe will help you to construct your your negation. But of course, you're also hearing the verb. Okay, the verb for those of you who don't who are not very skilled in in the linguistics uh, is the action word in a sentence. The the word nu is the action word which we call the verb. You in the first example I gave you is the action word in the sentence euphoba. 
the other the, the other action word in chur. Chur means slap. That's the action word in those sentences. The other one that I gave before is guia. Guia is cry. So as you look at all these examples that I'm giving you, dear friends, there is always an action word. And of course, this, the subject of the sentence is missing. The subject is the actor, the person who is doing the action. In the, in, the, in the imperative mode, you need to omit it. I will be teaching another lesson where I'll be talking about the subject verb structure, the, the subject verb object structure, and the subject verb direct object, indirect object construction in Gibbacocker. And that is a lesson for another day. I want to stick with the negation today. Uh, sorry, with the imperative today. And uh, we're doing the imperative in two lang in the two forms, the, po the, 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 the positive or the, the, the declarative form and also the, the, neg the negative form. Another example, come. The Bible Katman wants to say to you, come here. He's going to say, gwe fin, gwe is the equivalent of the English, is the English equivalent of come. Fin is here. So the Bible Katman will say, gwe fin, meaning come here. If the Bamka wants his one man a woman, whatever, it's not just man, Bamka, man, woman, or child wants to tell you to not come, they're going to place the fe, uh, the, the me and the fe, kame gwe fe, okay? Kame gwe fe, the gwe is the action. Then you have the me, which is the first part of your negation, and the fe is the second part of your negation. So the whole negative sentence will sound like this. Guifin, which is an instruction, come here, and the negative instruction would be come guifin fe, don't come here. Again, whatever you do, you're hearing the me and you're hearing the fe. So whatever you do, dear friends, listeners, in this platform, to construct a negation in the Bamunka language or the Ngemukoko, which we call it, you're going to make sure you have the uh, me, and then you have the fe somehow. They look for the action word which is your verb, and then you put it in between, okay? Another example is go. Go is ge in Bamuka, okay? Ge. ge. Ge cho. Cho is there. So if the Bamuka man says to you, ge cho, he's telling you, go there. And that's your imperative. You're giving instruction to somebody. Maybe somebody, uh, you want to send somebody to go and fetch you something, or you want to say you send somebody to participate in a particular occasion, you're going to say get cho. Get cho. Get is the verb and cho is there. Now, if you want to give that same person a negative instruction, you're going to say, come get choffy. Come get choffy. You understand? You guys understand what I'm saying here, guys. So you're hearing again the me and you're hearing the fe. Okay. The me is equivalent to the not. In French, is the 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 the, the me represents ne and the fe represents pas. For example, the French guys will say ne va pas, okay, ne va pas là bas. But um, uh, I don't want to confuse you with French uh, because that's another tough language. But see, if the, if the Bible Kama says says to you, "Kamo get chauffe" is the equivalent, the French equivalent of of ne va pas là bas, okay, ne va pas là bas, or don't go there in French, okay. Um, Another one is right. The Bible command says, no, that's right. Okay. If they want to tell you not to write, they're going to tell you, come your fe. Again, you're hearing the, the, the ne, the, so I'm sorry, the me, and then you're hearing the fe. Come your fe. Okay. No, that's the positive instruction. Right. Come your fe. Do not write. Okay, guys. I hope I'm not losing some of my some of you yet. It's a language that is very, 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 um, very hard to conceive. But again, with time, like with with any other language, I like I said earlier, I speak seven languages. It is not easy to keep all those the languages in your mind, in your brain, and speak them correctly. So, what is the magic? The magic is to practice over and over and over and over and speak it as often as you can. Um, the other, the, uh, the, the, the other example that I want to give is, uh, read. How would a Bama man say to you, read, for example, read this book. The verb read in Bama is T, T. And by the way, T can also mean call somebody. 
But in this particular case, I'm talking about reading a book, okay? If I wanted to say to a Bamanka man, read this book, I would say, Ti ngwono, ngwono is book in Bamanka, okay? And if I wanted to give an instruction using the imperative mode to, to give a command to maybe if I were a teacher in the Bamanka, in the school in Bamanka, for example, and I was telling the kids to read a particular book, I would say, be, ti ngwono, which be is you, you people, you folks. Like, which is the you uh, plural in the English language, okay? So the Bible man will say to you, be thing or no, uh, which represents uh, uh, read this book, okay? Now, the negation of that will be what? The negation of that would be be me thing or no, okay? Again, general, uh, friends, uh, listeners, you're hearing the me and the fe. So be me thing, be me thing or no, fe. Say the emphasis is as far as I'm concerned, is on the mer and the fe, which is negation particles. Uh, uh, another one is enter. Okay, ni ni cho, for example, is enter there or go in there. How would you say to the Bamuka to, uh, to somebody in Bamuka, do not enter there? Maybe there's a place that is forbidden. Who knows? In my village, we have all kinds of places, uh, shrines where we're not non-members or what we call a non-initiated members cannot go. If you wanted somebody made a mistake and wanted to run into some place that is a place reserved for initiates, what are you going to say? Coming in chofe. Coming in chofe. That's what you say to him. Coming in chofe. Which means don't enter there. Don't go in there. Okay, that's your negation. Coming in chofe. You're hearing the mer and you're hearing the fe in the, in the construction. So I think this is very important, uh, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I hope this gives you an idea. The very last example I'm going to give, and then I will try to round off this video because I don't want this vi these videos to be too long because people are going to be tired. The learning a language, it's you need to take it bit by bit. Uh, that's what I tell my students of, in other languages that I teach. Um, I also teach literature, but I'm talking about languages today. I teach linguistics as well, but I'm talking about language today, second language acquisition, which is one of my disciplines. Now, if you wanted to say, man, get out. Get get out. La fou. Okay, la fou. Or fou fin. Now, that's a positive in, in, in instruction. Fou fin or la fou. If you wanted to say that in the negation, you're going to say, Kame fou fin fe. Kame fou fe. Kame fou fe. Again, we're hearing the mer and we're hearing the fe. Now, what you need to be looking for, gentlemen, is look for the neg negative particles, ne, and the fe. And then you look, the third thing you want to look for is the action word, which is called the verb in any language. In Bamunka, you look for action wor words, which are verbs. In French, you look for action words. In English, Spanish, Hausa, whatever you speak, Pidgin, you're looking for action word because that is what, that is the lifeblood of any communicative act in any language that is on, the, on this planet Earth. So I hope this uh, uh, this it was helpful, uh, gentlemen. A uh, like I said, I started off by letting you understand that in Gimakoko, which is you know Bamunka, is a tonal language, which means that if you you mess around with the tone, you're going to say uh, things that are not not what the, the the native speaker of Bamunka intended to to uh, to say uh, in the future. I'll be I'll be dealing with what we call uh, false cognates in Bamunka. Okay, those are the kinds of words that you use. You intended to use one thing, you intend to say one thing, but you mistakenly said another thing because you don't know how to articulate the the, the sound syllables in the Ngemukoka, which is the which is our mother tongue. So you need, as learners of Bamunka, you need to be very 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 careful. How you articulate your 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 uh, your your sound segments, how you articulate your consonants, how you articulate your vowels, uh, how you articulate your diphthongs, and and uh, and so on and so forth, because these are what I call the the constituents of the language that you are trying to learn. So I hope this uh, initial lesson was of help. Uh, in the future, I'll be I'll be bouncing back to very simple things like articles and uh, singularity and plurality, and uh, you know femininity and masculinity in the language. But today, I thought I should start with this uh, initial one, 
and and see how you guys react to it now if you like this comment uh, this video please uh click the like the like button at the bottom of the of the video and uh, and uh, and show your appreciation if you uh want to subscribe to my channel i believe there's there is a the possi possi possibility for you to subscribe to my channel on the U youtube channel please do that and last but not the least if you have a comment, you have a question that you would like for me to resolve uh, during my next epi uh, episode of uh, the Bamunka Language Tutor, please write a comment there and I will, I will check it from time to time so that by the time I, I get back to, to the platform, I'll be able to answer your question before I begin a new lesson. Thank you very much for, for taking up the time to listen to this video. I know you could have spent your time doing other things. But if you did tune in, it's because something pricked you to uh, to tune in. So stay tuned. God bless you. I love you guys. Bye-bye.